In today's video, I'm going to answer a comment that was left on a couple of our videos. And I'm going to read the comment quickly and then answer this person's question and hopefully help them out. So the comment says, can I ask you something? I am a person who has a slightly average level in mathematics and this school season we were not able to study properly due to the strikes. So how can I become great at math in the next three months of summer vacation? I really don't know how I can do it. I was in 11th grade. I have a national exam in maths next year. So I felt I answered, I asked a follow-up question to the comment just to get a little bit more clarity regarding some sort of background and hopefully I can answer their, their question. So they responded with, uh, they're, they're, these are lessons that we did this year in another video they responded and we did half of them because of the strikes and then they list a whole bunch of lessons and they say that uh, they learn things in uh, math and French because they live in, or this person's from Morocco, not sure if Rocco speaks French uh, mostly, but he, the person said that uh, everything was translated from French. So here's my answer to that question. First of all, thank you for leaving the comments and asking that kind of question. It's a really good question. My first comment I want to make about that is you want to figure out if there is a way, what exactly is on that exam that you're going to take. So you have three months of prep for some exam. Hopefully there is some way that you can gather just a little bit of an edge going into that exam, whether it's just does the exam cover algebra, statistics, geometry, trig, is there trig on it? Because here in the U.S., uh, we take the SAT and the ACT after 11th grade or at the end of 11th grade. And the ACT, I think, doesn't cover trig, but the SAT does. I'm not sure which one, but I, it's like not even the same content. Some schools do the ACT, some schools do the SAT. So it kind of depends on where you live. So if you can figure out some way of what you need to know precisely, that would be a huge leg up from where just going in completely blind. So if you have some sort of access to some sort of database of knowing these topics, not even just like know this specific topic within algebra, just algebra, statistics, like that kind of knowledge. Second, you have three months of time. What does that three months look like in your personal life? Are you working? Uh, do you have friends that you want to see? Do you have activities that you're in? Because being in 11th grade summer, like I don't know if you're going to have complete three months of available time to just study math. And I'm not saying that I would even do that. If you if you had nothing going on, you had no job, you had nothing to do, all you could do is math. Like I wouldn't even recommend just sitting around doing math all day then. Like that's not good because uh, that's that's just a lot. You want to get out, exercise, run, walk, go see friends, go to the movies, do things that get your mind off of math, just if it's a couple hours a day. Like you don't want to just sit inside morning till night just doing math just to prepare for this exam that's coming up in the fall. Um, and, and knowing your schedule, especially like so if you have a job. When I was in high school, a lot of my friends, we worked 30, 40 hour weeks in the summer just because it was a good opportunity to make extra money. Remember, I had a job where I worked 30 to 32 hours a week just because I think 32 was the cutoff from not considering me full time. So they didn't have to give me benefits. Just give me, you know, pay me for my time. Uh, so I know I worked like a pretty heavy summer schedule along with training for cross country along with, you know, other things. So know your schedule. Like what does three months actually look like? Do you have availability every morning, every evening, in the middle of the day? So set your schedule and just say like every morning, 6.30, I'm going to wake up two hours, every afternoon, two hours, evening, two hours, whatever that schedule looks like. Once you know, here's how much time I actually have available in these three months, then you can plan what content do I want to spend that time. Like if you only have 20 hours a week, let's say over the three months, you have 20 hours a week of math time. That's going to go fast. Uh, so you got to figure out like how much time do you actually have to spend on math and what does that look like daily? That's really going to be, it keeps you accountable. Also, it, it really keeps you motivated to say, I just got I don't feel like doing this today, but I just got to do two hours from six to 8 AM or eight to 10 AM. Just going to do two hours, take a break, do something else and then come back. Next, so you got your schedule, you figured out how much time you actually have, you have X amount of hours over the summer. Next is figuring out how do you want to spend that time? So you sent me a list of 
topics that you covered or half of the stuff that you covered like it was some pretty heavy topics there's a lot on there there's a lot of algebra some statistics some trig some geometry so that's good just general knowledge and that's typically in the u.s that's how high school looks it's algebra one two and then geometry pretty much based on what state you live in and just how the high school runs like they call it different things like math one math two math three but it's all just covering algebra geometry algebra two and then some even cover a little bit of statistics to prepare for that SAT, ACT. So know what do you know, what don't you know? That's another huge piece of preparing for an exam like this is your algebra skills are really, really strong. Like, okay, good. How strong? That's where you got to figure out, like, how strong are your algebra skills or do you know any geometry at all? So I have a couple books pulled off my bookshelf here that I want to show you. But before I do that, I just want to emphasize again, you want to know how strong are your skills. So I have my first book here is a uh, beginning and intermediate algebra book um, by Elaine Martin Gay. Uh, I use this book in my classes. I've used it at multiple different colleges. This is a very popular book. This author writes a lot of different math books. This isn't something that I would use as like this will prepare me for this exam coming up in the fall. This is a good book to just develop a strong foundation for algebra. It has solving equations, systems of equations, factoring, rational expressions, rational equations, uh, logs, imaginary numbers, like everything that you need to be successful in algebra is in this book. And what I mean by that is if you're sitting here and you're like, I'm pretty good with solving equations, I'm not the best, like that's, you want to get, you want to be very, very good at solving equations. You want to be good at solving systems. You want to be good at those just base foundational mathematic principles like you don't want to go into this test and see this upper level college algebra algebra 2 type of problem and make a mistake on solving equations like that's not where you want to be so you want to get really good at those just key concepts so if that's where you're at and i don't know how strong you said you have average level math ability right now like i don't not not sure what exactly what average means but I'm going to assume that you're probably pretty good with this book. You probably don't need to go through this. Your solving equation skills are good. Your factoring is really good. If they're not, then I would start here. I would just start cranking through a book like this. This is just called Intermediate Algebra. You can buy any algebra book, really. This is just the one I recommend because I've used it so for so many years. Very long time at this point. Just find a very cheap old edition. Like This is the newest edition, 7th edition. Like You could find just an old cheap one. Uh, and doesn't even have to be this book but this is like to get really really good at just really foundational skills so now let's let's pretend like all right yeah i i know how to factor i know how to solve equations like that's not a problem then the next book i would recommend is college algebra by blitzer um, i also have a college algebra by sullivan textbook also that's another really good one so this College Algebra by Blitzer, this is a little bit higher than your Algebra 2 class that you take in high school. So again, high school, Algebra 1, Algebra 2. Algebra 2, you typically take like your junior year of high school before you take the SAT, ACT. It's, I think this book's like probably a little bit harder than what you need to know in Algebra 2, but that's a good thing. That means that if you could do the harder, then you could definitely do Algebra 2. And it's not like you necessarily have to master everything in this book or anything. Uh, just... This is just a really good baseline of like, okay, this stuff is really important. This probably this book is a little bit harder than what I need to know, but if I know it, then that means I could do the algebra too. Um, so I would, if you're past that intermediate algebra book, like if you don't really need that, then I would spend a lot of time in this book. Like this is a really good book. It has everything that you would need to know in algebra pretty much going into this exam, at least for the fall. Like any sort of algebra problem that might come up on that exam is gonna be here. Now the problem though, with just looking at college algebra over the next three months is your geometry, your statistics. Those are things that are not gonna get very strong because you're spending a lot of time just focusing on college algebra. From my experiences though, and things that I've seen, read, um, taking exams like that, a lot of the time, like a bulk of the exam will be algebra type of problems. And then there'll be like, if there's, let's say, 100 questions on an exam like that, there might be 60 questions on algebra and then like 20 on geometry or 10 on stats and just kind of broken up like that where it's smaller chunks of the other topics. It's not necessarily evenly distributed amongst all topics. It'll be really, really heavy on algebra. So if you're like, well, I don't really have 
all the time to master everything, I'd really spend a lot of time mastering college algebra. So now another huge question is, is there trig on this exam? That That's a huge question because you don't want to spend 30, 40, 50 hours of your three months doing trig if it's not going to be on there. So I do have a trig book that I want to show real fast. Uh, this is just trig. It's literally called trigonometry. Um, I've never actually taught out of it. I just have it. I'm not even sure if it's a good book. It's the only trig book I have. I have like a trig workbook, but trig books are really easy to find. There's plenty of resources on trig, but do not spend a bunch of time looking at trig if you don't know if it's even on there. Find out for sure because college algebra will have some trig in it. Same thing with that intermediate, intermediate algebra book that I showed. It will have some trig, like just trig ratios like that you might need to know. But when to get into the real deep trig, I don't know. You'll have to figure that out for where you live and what that exam might look like. But that's a good starting spot. So the, the gray area, though, is statistics. Like that's one thing that you might need to just buy some statistics books. I have a lot of statistics books, but I don't know if it's going to help what you need to know for your exam. Because um, sometimes statistics is just like looking at graphs and understanding what is this number saying, like what percentage and just being able to extrapolate and understand what that generalizes to in the population and just questions like that. Like not really necessarily like, can you calculate standard deviation? It's mostly just, do you understand statistical terms? Like, can you do stuff like that? So that's something you might want to look into too. That's another thing along with trig. I wouldn't spend a lot of time doing that. I'd spend most of my time in that college algebra book and just getting really good with everything that I can within that three months while also looking at geometry, looking at trig, looking at statistics, but really focusing on that college algebra book. And I think if you do that, I think you might be putting yourself in a pretty good position for success. So I hope this helps. If anyone watching this video has any sort of tips or comments or familiar with this exam in Morocco that this student is taking, leave a comment, give us some insight. Uh, but it's, I don't know anything about the exam, but if it's anything like the ACT, SAT, I think getting a strong Algebra 2 slash College Algebra Foundation will be a really good starting point. So hope this helps. Good luck.